Gram Vidam Mahavishnum Jalam Tam Sarvatomukam Nasimham Vishanam Badram Mrityum Mrityum Namam Yaham Gram Vidam Mahavishnum Jalam Tam Sarvatomukam Nasimham Vishanam Simhachalam, there is a one special day in the year, it's called Narsimha Chaturdashi. And in this special day, we have a very special moment, it's when the Lord appears in the evening, so it's evening darshan. We will try to show you how this year we put endeavors of me and many other devotees uh, to make this darshan unique and special. So it's kind of like an ongoing process always, uh, how we develop this darshan. Always after one festival, next days after festival, always in triggering what we do the next year. <laughs> and um, in recent years, it's always been Minakshi Swamini Mataji. She's always there making at least one new outfit for the Lord. Sometimes she makes two, three new outfits. The whole summer, I am kind of picking up inspirations around this specific darshan. I saw the beautiful picture done by Paramdamananda Prabhu. It's a picture of a sunset uh, and uh, it was standing in the corridor of my parents. When I was looking at this, uh, this picture, it showed this time of twilight. I thought it would be very nice to dress the Lord in the shape of colors which are actually given in, in the sunset. And after that I saw one lady dressing in a beautiful blue outfit with a gold embroidery. I saw, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> this year we do it like that. <laughs> So the planning, we on um, one point met together. I already have a picture of what we want to do and each of us took some part of engagement in that section. The very nice thing is that uh, Govinda Dev was an uh, amazing artist. He already designed these letters. I just actually started searching which mantras would be the best, you know, then we just decided on this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya. And then also the Vija Mantra of Lord Nisimhadev, Om Shram. From there uh, I could see that I could design a mandala and use the Vija Mantras for Pralat, Vija Mantra for Lakshmi and Vija Mantra for Lord Nisimhadev. Ultimately uh, Mahajan Prabhu was the one who had to implement it. Govinda Dev sent me his, his files. So he, he made um, some vector graphics of the mantras. Then. I had to speak also with Menakji all the time how big it should be and on which part of the garments should it be because Menakji sent me the garments and Govinda did the files. And uh, the Nilambar Prabhu had an idea with, uh, with the wood carving. Yeah, we just uh, spoke about the size of it and the shape and which style of uh, script we're going to use. And I just figured out with the help of Govinda which size of radius we will use. At one point also Gopigita came, I was asking her if she can make some nice design for the pillars. For me it was planning what would have an impact when you saw it. Then I knew that I would design a pillar but real size. And next we spoke about going to our local printers and printing it off. Oh you know, art school, we printed it off at the printer. That used to be right behind me. Ooh, like a ball. So my part was first I need to order the materials. When the materials comes, I first somehow I wash them. I try to get <laughs> get a little bit of energy out of it, and then point I can start to cut materials, specific uh, measurements that I have, and then I send it to the Mahajan, who was doing the whole stitching process. After he finished the stitching, he was sending me what he was done. And then I start to sew different pieces of outfits and uh, doing embroidery. This year I put some LED lights behind so to make this effect and use some technology extra. I was looking for a nice font. So I realized that this probably is the best to use because this is a very ancient uh, type font. 
from around maybe 500, 600 years ago, this traditional text. Uh, it's called Jaini Purva. First we brought the Devanagari, then we changed it into this very nice Jaini Purva font. I imported this PDF into a program and developed a vector file. So vector file means it's a file that you can feed into a machine and the machine can trace the path of those letters. Based on these files, Mahajan Prabhu had to adjust it in his machine. It was kind of like a triangle, you know? <laughs> so I developed the fonts with Menakshi Swamini Mataji, you know, where to fit what, and I gave it to Mahajan Prabhu, and Mahajan Prabhu went back to Menakshi to figure out how exactly he should position it once he was applying you know, what I had designed. I had to digitize or punch the embroidery file from the vector graphic to go in like they gave me. And then I have to adjust all the density of the stitches and the, the pull and push compensation. Yeah, and then after the file was created, I had to place it on the, on the garment. So I had to measure it. In the embroidery machine, you have embroidery frames. So you put the garment in a frame. So that it can, cannot move in any direction. And the embroidery machine moves the, the frame and, and stitches on it. But as I finished uh, everything, then I sent it back to Menakshi and she started sewing. I would have found here, then I draw the, the section of a circle on it, and then I draw the mantra on it with pencil. Then I tried to cut them out, but I realized the plywood is too weak, it will break. I had to make a thicker plywood out of two thin plywoods. After having the thicker plywood, I cut the letters out. Uh, with the first letter, I had a big cut in my finger. Yeah, after the cutting, I made some fine work with sandpaper. And after it, I painted them and then I fixed them on a bow. And then Minakshi Maraji had some LEDs which we placed in a certain way. I was trying to get the form 3D but as a stencil, which is a little bit difficult. And this is why on the pillar you'll see there's these parts that, that turn like this, which gives us a three-dimensional illusion. And the central part um, is this more intricate pattern. I found something from the internet, but I had to edit it in Photoshop quite a lot because I knew that it would be cut out. This printing part looked up the printing settings in the document I was working with, found how it will be tied together, overlap. And because when you print it, you only muck it up, you're printing 45 sheets of paper, although it's not much on each one, maybe, but still. She told me about this lighting, she had this idea that normally in an outfit you don't notice the pillars so much but here you see them somehow, they, they come out and they come alive. Challenges were, as I was sewing before, I know approximately how much time I need. The most challenges the first time we done the, the pillars from the one very specific material and it was unbelievable, but it was very hard to cut it. I need around 10 ladies working on it for a few days just to cut the shape. This was kind of a new experience for me. I thought it would be done in two, three days, but it actually take much longer and much more engagement. That I knew it, I would maybe start it earlier. But the good thing is on festival come many people and everybody asks, can I do something? And I just send them to the room, yeah, you can just cut. <laughs> First of all, I needed a lot more time than I thought I would and here I had problems with the material. A few of the letters I had to make again. I just glued the two plywoods together as it cost some extra time because then I had to wait for a night until this is dry. But finally on single tutorial in the morning I could finish it. And the finger was challenging because this was just at the very beginning of the main work. It was a deep cut, it was bleeding, so I just put on top of my thumb a big bandage with high pressure so that I, that I could continue to work because there was no other way. You're embroidering something on the garment. On the left and right side, if you have a, a line, the garment is pulled together and on the top and lower end it's pushed out. That you have to take in consideration. 
there are some fibers in the fabric standing upwards, like like hairs. And if you embroider on a line on it, it sinks in and you don't see it anymore. And so I have to make an underlayer that dense enough that's pushing the, the fibers flat and the top layer covers it all and the, the hairs don't poke through. In the embroidery machine, you have embroidery frames. And I only have the biggest size hoop was is 40 by 35 centimeters. And the garments were much bigger. So the, the biggest garment was the cape of Metzinger Dave. It was 270 centimeters. I always have to hoop one word and then go to the next word and hoop it again. And the difficult is to, uh, to align it so it will be uh, the same height than the word before and not too far away, not too close. There I had to, to hoop it six times. I hadn't done as much as I would like to and what's this and I wasn't happy with the stuff and it, it was much more intricate the pattern than I first thought. I tried to simplify it and at some moment I, I started to get more of an idea of where I was going or what I was doing with it. This pattern when it got printed off, the printer took five minutes for each sheet of paper, it was like 40 sheets of paper, and to piece it all together took a long time because it should be exact. When you do something like that, when you lay paper together or you're cutting, you have to be quite peaceful. So the later it was getting, I knew that I couldn't line it up properly because it was literally within a, a few millimeters gap. So it, and it, you know, it should be perfect. I couldn't complete the cutting out. It passed. It went to many different ladies. I don't begin to mention all of them. Even on the Shinichi they were still cutting it out. Uh, some challenges was to find out exactly how, how the Vanagari is spelled. I can read some letters, but I'm not completely expert or fluent at reading the Vanagari. With some researches, but well, not so difficult. Omnamoba uh, Gvatainara Singhaya, this was relatively easy. We could just, you know, go to database, we find the right verse and we have the nice Devanagari there. So I just you know, copy-paste. Then Sri Panchatattva was a little bit more difficult to find, you know, proper spelling. Uh, Sri Guru Parampara was, you know, a little bit more difficult. Uh, Hanuman was very easy, Garuda was quite difficult. There was a few different variations I saw and then we actually made a slightly longer word uh, of Garuda, which means the Garuda bird. So it's like symmetrical because Hanuman is longer than Garuda. And then also to figure out which file Mahajan could use at the end. I was exporting PDF files and vector files, three different files. He also doesn't know exactly which file he used at the end, but some, something worked. <laughs>
first time I came to Simhachalam some 15 years ago and I was always very amazed somehow with the mood of the darshan and now when I know that I can be part of it I feel very very fulfilled to do something like this. I always look the inspiration and creativity as, as the circle which is starting by the Lord He's giving you the potency, he gives you this uh, ability to do creation and then you're giving it back so the circle is closed at that point. So therefore I see this is kind of fulfillment of my life <laughs> to do something like this. Some numbers. In total, stitch count 2,640 stitches. We use thread in total in around 11,000 meters, so 11 kilometers. Only the stitching itself took at least um, 42 hours. And then I had to clean up everything and put in the new frames and then at once I had to make the, the file and everything. So in total work count should be around 80 and 100 hours. And if I would have done it for, for a customer, would be 2,500 or 3,000 euros, maybe 4,000. <laughs>